Inside New Orleans Sports with Eric Asher is underwritten by... At Villarese Flores, we deliver the magic of flowers seven days a week to the North Shore and South Shore in the New Orleans area. Whether it's for birthday parties, baby celebrations, Villarese provides colorful floral displays for all. With a store full of fresh cut flowers, exotic tropical flowers, orchids, roses, and even fruit baskets, our goal is to make your vision a reality. Villaries Florist, proudly serving Louisiana since 1969. Mr. Ed's Oyster Bar and Fish House has been shocking here since 1979. Located at 3117 21st Street in Metairie, Mr. Ed's Oyster Bar and Fish House offers raw, fried and grilled oysters as well as a range of Cajun and Creole dishes. Enjoy a dozen with a smile. and welcome to another edition of Inside New Orleans Sports. I'm your host, Eric Asher. Over the next hour, we cover all the home teams as we always do. Uh, the New Orleans Saints, the LSU Tigers, the Tulane Green Wave, and we hope to have time for the New Orleans Pelicans. Great guest, as always, one of my good friends, Gus Cattengill of ESPN 100.3, joins us on the program. Gus, welcome to the show. Good to have you, as always, my friend. And things are hopping down the <laughs> dial there, huh, at 100.3. Yeah, so? I cannot believe that we're already in the month of August. Yeah, it's amazing, and, isn't it? And uh, it's on. I mean, we got, you know, Saints preseason that mm -hmm. kicks off here. Obviously, what, you're three weeks away from the start of mm -hmm. college football. And, you know, it's crazy. We were um, talking earlier last week about Pelicans basketball, mm -hmm. right. so it's right around the and, corner. And you guys September. have the contract now, so you're the voice yeah. of the Pelicans? Yeah. Yeah, looking yeah. forward so to that. We're a month about or so away. The schedule's released right. next week. I mean, it's, I'm ready to and, go. And that's kind of amazing. I was talking about it a little bit today, because you almost got to remind everyone, because this has been a football town for so long, and now some people are getting a little bit acclimated to basketball. Beginning of October, they're in camp. Yeah. By the middle of October, the season starts now. It's no longer a Halloween opening night right. for the NBA. It's the middle of October now because yeah. of load management. You know, so they don't put a lot of um, pressure on the players, playing back-to-backs, et cetera, having to, have, having to play, what is it, three games in, in, in two nights, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So it's a little bit different. So people are thinking, oh, the Pelicans don't start. And some thought the Pelicans didn't start until January around here. <laughs> right. But some of them think, oh, it's going to be a big enough. No, no, middle of October. Yeah. Yeah, the preseason schedule was released earlier this mm -hmm. week, so we know the five dates, games that, that that's happening. And my understanding is it's going to be in the 20s, so October 21st, 22nd, yeah. or something like that, right. um, which is pretty remarkable because it was last year the 11th. Yes, I it think. was. It, it was, was way too early. early. I remember it being Halloween mm -hmm. and really like November 2nd and 3rd, mm -hmm. so they've been trying to expand it, but it's right. so long. You know, when you think about the NBA schedule, what's crazy is – the Pels will be starting second month of the Saints. You mm -hmm. could be seeing where they are after that right. brutal four-game stretch. LSU's going into, you know what, uh, Florida, Auburn, and in in and um, in Mississippi State. Yes. That stretch into October, kind of seeing where they are. That's when the Pels are starting. Mm -hmm. When they finish, and you hope to be towards the end of April, right. the Saints will be ready to draft again. Right. They would have had free agency. Mm -hmm. The Super Bowl would have right. been played. It's crazy. Baseball would have been started. Mm -hmm. So it's a long, long season when you think Yeah, there's it. no doubt. And, of course, around here, you're hoping that, you know, college baseball, all the teams are doing well, especially around, around that time. Right. And, you know, it, it just, you know, Gus, it's just is really setting up. And, and you, you and I have talked about it. I've talked about it on the show. I'm sure you've talked about it on yours. This could be one of those great years. Yeah. When you talk about what's expected out of the Saints, we, we, we're going to talk about, again, what's expected out of LSU, mm -hmm. Tulane on the rise as well in terms of football. New basketball coach at Tulane and Ron Hunter, who's really brought a lot of energy to right. that. Sless is always doing a great job yeah. at UNO. And, and, of course, well, you know, Will Wade is expected to rebound pretty well up in Baton Rouge, adding, adding more players. And then you get into the college football, college baseball season, where, again, all teams are expected to, to, yeah. to be playing very, very well. I mean, this could be one of those really special years. Yeah, and then, you know, obviously we have Nichols on ESPN New right. Orleans, and they're unanimous to win their conference right. football-wise. Uh, I spoke with Coach Napier, Millie Napier of UL. The Cajuns mm -hmm. are picked to finish first over there. 
mm -hmm. uh, and go to the title game again like last year. So the cages are starting to come back. True. They're opening the season against Mississippi State in the Superdome. So you're starting to see the Dome now kind of have those kickoff mm -hmm. weekends to college football. Sure. So, yeah, it's, it's crazy. I mean, it, I, I love it. It's one of the things that yeah. you say about this city that, that really is – um, it's encompassing now. It's starting to get to the point where if you have some success, Eric, we, we may be going 11, 12 months a year where mm -hmm. we can be talking about yeah. something. We're only going to have about a right. two, three well, week. Well, we period. didn't have really down period this year yeah. because of the Pelicans. Right. They really gave us something to talk about, yeah. you know, which really become the dog days of summer because of what David Griffin uh, yeah, did. Maybe two weeks reinvented. tops. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, it's not like, but normally you're trying to pull topics out. You didn't have to do that this year. <laughs> and, and again, that was, a, that was a respite there. And look, I neglected to talk about the Pelicans. Well, I think we'll challenge for an eighth seed as well this year. So, yeah. you know, it's going to be exciting. And look, the, the, the schedule maker thinks it's exciting as well. Opening with Toronto at home, mm -hmm. uh, a Thanksgiving Day game against uh, Anthony Davis and the Los Angeles Lakers, and a Christmas Day game against the Denver Nuggets. Obviously, the Zion effect is, is in full effect. And I tell you, we're going to find out who has the most power, too, right, when it comes to the NBA or Elton John, mm -hmm. because I was right. talking to people over there at the Pels. It shows here, right? But will the, will the champs open up on the road? Will they not have right. the ring ceremony there? Right. So could they bump Elton John? If they bump right. Sir Elton John, you then, know, then the NBA's got – Right, it'll be right. on the road. But, well, that's pretty crazy because, you yeah. know, again, uh, talk, talking a little bit about it on the show today because it, it is a natural. Yeah. Open up against Toronto where you're on the road. And then I read a little bit later, no, 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 there's a possibility that it's going to be here in the Smoothie King Center because right. of Elton John up there. So, you know, we'll see what's going what's to happen. Elton, is it okay if you – the night before? The yeah. night after? I mean, can we look? Maybe Elton John might enjoy the game. She and Zion. Exactly right. Right. You know what I'm so, saying? It's exciting, though. No, um, it is. It's. It's fun. I'm ready. Yeah, I'm, I, I think everybody is. And, and look, it, it starts now with, with finally yeah. on Friday getting, getting a little taste of Saints football in the preseason. And look, I, I'm one of those ones that I enjoy preseason. I know a lot of people don't. They don't watch it. You know, again, I'm not able to get out to camp a lot to be able to see what's going on. So my first chance to really see these players up close and personal is during preseason. And I'll watch a game twice, you know, to try to watch what's going on. You've had a chance to be able to go out to camp. Um, talk a little bit about your impressions of this camp so far. It's basically what I've thought. And, and going into it, Eric, I had one simple storyline. I probably said it here last time I was mm -hmm. here with Chris Hagan. Health. I, mm -hmm. We have to, sure. part on a day-to-day -day basis, come up with storylines and come up and do things that, uh, you know, who's hot, who's not, who's standing out. Sure, we'll mm -hmm. do that to kind of get you through camp. But the Saints have one real storyline. Get healthy, get to the Texans, get at the business at hand. Mm -hmm. I had a poll question earlier this week on the show, and it was simple. It, it was, what is your reasonable expectation of the Saints this year? Is it getting to the NFC Championship game? Is it getting to the Super Bowl? Is it winning the Super Bowl? Yes. Those are all different to sure. me, right? right. Um, we've had several seasons where you were excited to get to the postseason. You were excited to maybe get to the championship game. Uh, let, maybe this is a team that can get to the Super Bowl. Am I lying, Eric? Your callers, right. people on social, right. people expect the Saints to be contending, not holding up on Lombardi. I mean, this right. is almost talked about as nonchalant. This is Breeze's farewell year. He's going to mm -hmm. win the Lombardi. He's going to get the MVP. He's, he's going to do that, right? Um, I was also talking a little earlier in the week in the show. Is it almost like two several two, two NBA seasons mm -hmm. ago, Warriors Cavs, where I see Kansas City and New Orleans right now. Mm -hmm. Now we can debate and fill time, sure. and sure you might have some teams that can mm -hmm. contend and compete. But I think those are the two best mm -hmm. teams in the NFL. Right. And barring injury, barring deviation of what I see, they should meet in Miami. Right. I mean, I honestly believe that. So. I'm not surprised at all that over 80% of the fans said, mm -hmm. no, it's winning the Super Bowl. Not getting to the game right. and seeing what happens. Because I kind of felt that was, that was the beauty about Miami. I can't believe we're here. Right. You know, wow, that's Peyton bleeping Manning and the Colts looking mm -hmm. around you. You're, what an amazing time that like, was. Yeah, right. And you're just like, this is incredible. Right. But, you know, it's crazy. Do you remember who scored the first touchdown in that game? No, I'll tell Pierre Thomas. Thomas. Yeah, that's right. Right? right that's right. And it goes it to the point of your question that right. you first started on before I went on my memory that's, kick. Mm -hmm. um, that's why the preseason is somewhat important. Mm -hmm. Sean Payton this year, uh, this week, said to him it is important because we have examples of players that have made the mm -hmm. team in the final preseason game. He goes on to beat the fourth-round draft pick in Antonio mm -hmm. Pittman and score the first touchdown right. in Super Bowl history for the Saints. So there are going to be some storylines. Eric, I think one of the things you're going to see today is, or, or this week, I, it's going to be the hardest thing 
for them to make cuts this year. Yes. It's a deep team. It was tough last year. Absolutely. You know, so and, it matters, the preseason. No, it definitely that. does. Uh, you mentioned something. I want to take that first, and then I'm going to get into some positions, and I want to talk a bit about what, what you've seen thus far. What do you think is going to happen sure. you know, down the line? You said it. A lot of people believe this. Swan song for Drew Brees. Yeah. Win the Super Bowl, hold up the MVP trophy, the Lombardi, and then go off into the sunset. I'm of a different mindset. <laughs> I think he's going to play as long as he can physically play at a high level. And I've said this for a lot of reasons. Number one, he's a competitor. Mm -hmm. There are records out there he can still get. He's left some Super Bowls on the table here. Saints have only got one Super Bowl and, again, should be on par with the New England Patriots. It should have been, if you look at it realistically, the Saints and the New England Patriots should have been the best two teams in the Super Bowl. They've had some you know, self-inflicted wounds. The defense hasn't been there. We can talk about all of that. And then the other part is his kids. His kids are still young enough and, 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 and are enjoying the fact that they can be around an NFL not locker room, be around an NBA locker room. And once you're gone and it's over, it's over at yeah. that point. So I really think if, he's, if there's not a drop-off in, in, in his skill set, that he will be back for another season. Now that is going to be an interesting scenario what's going to happen with Teddy Bridgewater, you know, if he's going to sit another year or two. But what's your take there? Because I think he's coming back unless we see the bottom drop out. You go back to Sunday's practice at Yeoman Stadium, and you see him afterwards, mm -hmm. just surrounded by all the kids, the flag football teams. And I guess I see a little bit differently being a father of a two-year-old, sure. almost three. And everyone has told me, and you know this, mm -hmm. right? Those, those early years, the most precious. Oh. That's when they want to play with you, mm -hmm. be held. I played cards with him earlier this right. week. I mean, it's like that's what he wants to do. And then they don't want to be with you. And then, you know, mm -hmm. you're, the other kid's dad's better than mm -hmm. yours. I know what's coming. Right. Um, Prepare yourself. So, right. Friend. So that's my point. It's like they're still sort of there in mm -hmm. that age. Does he miss, does he not want to mm -hmm. miss that? Would be my thing. I think it'd be awfully hard if he wins. And they win the and he wins the MV. I, he's accomplished it. What yeah. two's better than one? Very sure. unique area. I get it. You can have three. Look, this team is positioned to make runs here for the near future. Right. Um, and what's remarkable is I think the one thing that's really hit me so far in practice is even at 40 years old, there is a drop off between him and Teddy Bridgewater. Mm -hmm. It. And I don't mean that in a negative way, but it's almost surprising in terms of you'd be expecting father time and a, and a guy that's You're talking 26. about physical skills. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, t should Teddy be blowing him out of the water? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Should right. be like, okay, I see that. I mean, I mean, to the point where I'm like, look, he's, he's a bridge quarterback. I, I don't know where it's going to go. And I understand the offense mm -hmm. may be designed differently under, yes, but sure. Um, and again, I, I, that's why to me, where we'll get into what we want to see on Friday. It's real right. simple. I, come out and say it. I know Sean sometimes gets coy mm -hmm. and, well, let's get the quarterback rotation. There's no need. Come out and say it. Drew will play against the Texans. In the meantime, he's going to get work against the Chargers. Mm -hmm. He'll be able to do all those different things. I need to know what I have in Teddy Bridgewater. Yes. I don't know. Right now, right. I've made a comment after a practice. I'm like, maybe you develop Taysom. He has the stronger right. arm. He can do more. I just Teddy should be blowing me away. Right. You get you know what I'm getting at? I, I do. So, and – and it's unfair because we haven't seen him, right. which is why I want him. And maybe it is behind the doors already told. I want him to prepare every week like he's going. I want him to see him against the starters. Mm -hmm. I want. I need to know what I have in five. I know what I got in nine. Right. But I do see your point. If they make a run, they win another 13 wins this year and win the Super Bowl. You know, again, I think it depends on the season. If right. it's a struggle and they still get in there mm -hmm. and do that, Maybe he goes, you know what, it, it's time. Right. Injuries could also well, be an issue on key. it as well. If, if he f flies through the mm -hmm. season, has another, you know, 4,000-plus yard season, right. we don't sit there. Because last year, Eric, we saw some games where right. the, the throws are short, you know. And Was that, things like that physical drop-off in terms of skill or a, a fact that you had a – Wide receiving core that was still growing, immature, and then an offensive line that, because of injuries, became porous. You know, I mean, some people want to say the decline is, well, as the year went on, right. it, uh, the, the, the season became physically taxing. I, I, I'm of the opinion this was all about the offensive line and the wide receivers. And, you know, maybe it's fool's goal for me, but, I mean, I, I can see maybe he doesn't make the deep throw like he used to, but he can still make every other throw on the field. It's all of it. Right. It's all the above. And if we had to rank them, absolutely with you, O-line one. Receivers, mm -hmm. or lack there of people stepping up two, which is a combination because of one. 
but there was some drop off. I mean, you did see some of those throws get short, some of the accuracies. Now, again, what is he dealing with something? Is it just longevity? I mean, it is what it is. He's got to be um, able to step up in the pocket, Gus. He's got to have a clean 100% pocket today. with you. At least, at least at this point in his career. But that's why I said I'm with you offensive mm-hmm. line first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know there were so many people that were trying to tell everybody in the world that they mm-hmm. needed to go get receivers in free agency mm-hmm. and right. all this. What did they do? Nothing. Nothing. They sat there, and what have you seen? Emmanuel Butler, mm-hmm. Keith Kirkwood. Right. You know, with Simi Cobbs. I mean, you've seen all these younger guys mm-hmm. going. And we've said it on this show repeatedly. Jarrett Cook is Michael Thomas's number two. Yes. So they're going to go there. And I'll, I have a point to make eventually about Cook Thomas and Kamara, about right. that trio compared to the mm-hmm. rest of the league here in a little bit. But when you look at it, there was some drop-off. Mm-hmm. Yes, you need better play. You need more than one target in Thomas to help. But that O-line's got to be yeah. – that's the key. Healthy. That's the key. I mean, at least at this point in his career, running game, yeah. strong defense, offensive line yeah. that's going to protect him. And all of that will help you play right. longer. Yeah, right? no, I agree. Look, at I at a high Tom, level. I think Tom Brady's deal over the weekend could be something to look at. Mm-hmm. He's getting paid the same as Drew, 23 right. mil. It's essentially a one year plus one sure. deal. So I think they're going to play it by the year. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think it would make sense. Like I said, if they have a successful run, and we're not sitting here going, man, I throw a short. And then, right. then, yeah. But, right. again, I, See, man, he's I just, too much of a perfectionist. If he sees this or feels this at that point, right? he's not going to let his legacy be and tainted. Look, and, and don't think history doesn't matter to him. Right. To be able to mm-hmm. hold that trophy and instead of holding one child, have all four standing oh, yeah. next to him. Right. Well, look While he's holding the, record, the Lombardi. Right? I'm just saying, like, yeah. to me, it's the perfect picture, right? Ten yeah. years apart. All right. You brought Teddy Bridgewater up. Let's talk Taysom Hill for a second sure. as well. See, I'm of the opinion that um, he's not a professional quarterback, that um, he doesn't have the accuracy, uh, that maybe, again, he's got the arm strength. Uh, you can design an offense around him to, take, uh, to uh, you know, uh, deal with the skill set that, that he has. But, you know, to me, he's always going to be a gimmick-type guy that, that, that the Saints are going to use and uh, an emergency guy in a pinch if you mm-hmm. need him. Bridgewater, to me, is the, is the guy, whether it's a bridge guy to a young player they're going to draft down the line, or, again, he's going to be the heir apparent here. Uh, you know, the question is, again, now he's had enough time to absorb this, uh, this, uh, this playbook and this scheme and the right. concepts. This should be second nature to him going into the season. I'm with you. I don't want to see number nine in the preseason. There's no reason to see number nine in the preseason. I want to see what you have in Bridgewater and Hill when they get an opportunity to play. And I want to see Hill in the pocket. I don't want to see him rolling out and making time with his feet, even though that's the way he's going to be as a quarterback. I want to see if he can stand in there and fire the ball and and, and throw accurate throws in in tight windows. So here's the interesting question. Yes, he's a gimmick right now, or he's a special package player. Is that because of the design mm-hmm. and the vision? Sean Payton says it all the time. You have to have a vision for a player. Sure. So you know you have a starting quarterback, right? Right. You probably need, because you're making a run, mm-hmm. a veteran that can come in if Drew needs to go to the bathroom for a series. And I don't want to say the injured. One. Right. So it's not Taysom. But you have an athlete who has unique ability. Right. Strength, size, speed is a quarterback, understands the offense, intelligence can read it. Mm-hmm. Nobody else has it. My job is to try to get points on the board. So I think what's going to be interesting moving forward with Taysom Hill is the Taysom you're seeing now is because that's the vision Sean sees him right. to use him now, right? If he just saw him as a quarterback only, if, he, if this was another head coach that didn't say, hey, that guy there can run, that guy there can tackle, that guy – Maybe we use him here or there. If you would have a Coughlin, is he on the team? Because he would be looked at as a quarterback. Right. Then you add the other comment to this. Remember Jay Gruden last year had a couple of quarterbacks he had in. He grabbed a couple, and then he had to release them because he got through the preseason. He's like, I don't have time to develop them. Mm-hmm. JT Barrett got cut earlier in right. camp. He had one team drill the last practice I saw him. He had one, one snap on the final team drill. It was a handoff. You tell me how JT Barrett can get better. No, he can't. So to your point, I need to see him in the pocket. I need, well, how is he supposed to do that if when he's on the field, you're asking him to line right. up in the slot, do True. handoffs, run wildcat, RPO. But that's what the preseason is for. Now, remember something else that Sean Payton said. The next quarterback after Drew Brees mm-hmm. is not going to run True. this offense. I agree. And if you look 
at the quarterbacks that have been coming into the league. Carson Wentz a mm -hmm. couple years ago. He doesn't hurt himself. Eric, he's the MVP mm -hmm. that year, right? right? How do you get hurt? Running outside right. the pocket. Sure. I, I'm not talking, I, I think the league isn't Michael Vick running. No, it's not. But they want mobility. Well, we got RPO and, and, and in college, that's, that is the offense now. The MVP of the year of the league last year threw 50 touchdowns. And I will challenge you to tell me that he's a pocket quarterback. No, he's not. Pat Mahomes no, is not. all over the place. Right. Now, because he can throw outside of it. Mm -hmm. He sure. doesn't run. He can extend plays. But it's his mobility right. in and around the pocket. I, I think we have to evolve what the definition of the pocket is, right? I think the days of you have to stay within the tackle and guard and mm -hmm. move up and, you know, movement or lateral to vertical is just mm -hmm. two to three yards. I think that's gone. A, because the defensive defensive ends and the D lines and the exotic packages you're seeing, they're just too quick. So if you can have a quarterback that it can extend the play, that's probably what you want. Do I want a guy that's a statue in there right now if I had my choice? No, nobody does. Okay? So. Look at Trevor Lawrence for Clemson. Mm. That guy can fling it, mm. but can move as right. well. Tua can fling it, but can move as well. So I think you're seeing the development of quarterbacks kind of evolve a bit. Because remember, by the way, the two I just mentioned for Clemson and Bama won championships as freshman quarterbacks. Right. These QBs are being developed earlier and earlier and earlier from the mental standpoint because of different camps and different coaching to when they're getting to big time college programs, they get it. From from Georgia mm -hmm. was a starter as a freshman, right? So those three quarterbacks are about to come into the NFL in the next couple of years, have already started four or five years, and they're all mobile quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. To your point, uh, when, with guys that are starting earlier, you have to now because mm -hmm. the big-time programs can only hold on with these guys for three years. Right. You're not going to have a senior quarterback anymore. I mean, again, right. it's, it's, it's going to be few and far between. And just like, again, there's an evolution with it from, the, from the college game to the NFL game where guys are in the, or, or in the shotgun, they're in the RPO, they're not under center, you have to be able to develop that to, to be able to be an NFL quarterback. Mm -hmm. To me, you've got to be able to at least be in the pocket. Now, look. Uh, it's Lanyap to be able to be able to use your legs, to be able to open up uh, an opportunity to be able to uh, uh, extend plays, give your receivers a little bit more chance to be able to get open. But at the same time, you still got to be able to, to be able to do it. And there's one other part of this. Taysom Hill has been injury free in the NFL. But his time right. in college, he never finished a season. Yeah. Okay, now maybe that's the maturing of his body, uh, you know, um, uh, diet, exercise, weightlifting on the, on the professional level that he didn't do on the college level. We don't know that. But we do know there's a history of injury there right. when he becomes the guy under center, you know, for, for, as, as the starter. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Look, I think this is a prove-it-to-me preseason for the quarterback position for this team. I agree. For both of them. Yeah, look, absolutely. You, know, you go back to... And I love to pick on him with the kitty cats over there in Carolina, but the year Cam Newton won mm -hmm. an MVP mm -hmm. and brought the team to oh. the Super Bowl, he is not terribly accurate, mm -hmm. right? Right? Can throw it through a barn. Um, and, and again, you just go through to what Sean Payton says this training camp, putting stress on the defense. Right. And when you play a quarterback, that is now Cam Newton's been injured. Sure. Okay. Which so, is the downside of that. Like I said, it, it'll be interesting. Right. I, I wouldn't be shocked if Drew, let's say they win the Super Bowl, he hangs it up and they move mm -hmm. forward. I think you, you see what you see now. Maybe Teddy's under center as much, and I see Taysom still. I think you just ride the Taysom mm -hmm. train until, you know, it, it stops being productive, to be honest with you. I think we'll learn a lot in the NFL what's going to happen with Murray out in Arizona. Yeah. Okay, because that, he is the prototypical running quarterback. He's got a gun for an arm. He's accurate. Okay, maybe a little shorter in stature like Drew Brees, where Brees, again, needed that pocket to be able to pass. He doesn't. And we'll see, again, and then how healthy can he stay? And look, it, it may be a position that's created as well. Denny Etley, the former LSU quarterback, right. the Patriots are trying to use him like Taysom Hill. Yeah. I guarantee you there was, that's not the only team that's trying to do yes. that, right? So, right. I, Although they might pick a better athlete than Denny I, Etley, I'm right? with you. No one ever thought watching <laughs> him at LSU you to me? do that. So I wonder, may, maybe there is a place in the NFL for a player that's sort of like that, mm -hmm. that in the past would have gotten cut, right. but has a skill set that can throw when we need him to. I mean, last year he missed on bombs to Kamara and stuff. So right. the guy's got a gun oh, in you the cannon. Oh, he's got the arm. And it, it's just how much usage do you like? I, you're seeing with Grayson and, and, and uh, you know, Rochelle and a couple of other ones mm -hmm. that, that the Saints have for special teams and things of that nature. Maybe he's not going to be used as much in special teams to where you can prolong that. Because wear and tear, you can't have him play 
on special teams full time no. and then do the things that he does. If he's going then, to be a quarterback, that part of his, uh, of, of his uh, right. playbook is done. Right. I mean, you shell that. Okay, he's a quarterback. He's a quarterback at that point. Even if he becomes the backup at that point, maybe, uh, maybe you right. use him a little bit in the offense, but you don't, you don't have him running down on kicks. Yeah, I can't be tackling kicks if you want him no. to be the backup to Teddy or competing for Yeah, I would agree. You're watching Inside New Orleans Sports. Our guest tonight is Gus Catgill of ESPN 100.3 FM here in New Orleans. We're going to take a break. We come back and we'll continue the conversation about the Saints. We'll get into the LSU Tigers and the Tulane Green Wave. Stick around. Burkhart's Air Conditioning, Heating, and Refrigeration has been family-owned and operated since 1989. Burkhart has energy-efficient solutions and offers brands such as Mitsubishi ductless AC units and Amena, the only manufacturer with a lifetime unit replacement warranty. Burkhart's offers maintenance bundle packages that include servicing your AC, generator, and tankless water heater. For more information on the services Burkhart's provides, visit acpromise.com. Burkhart's Air Conditioning, Heating, and Refrigeration, providing comfort for life. Located at 3701 Iberville Street in Mid-City is Katie's Restaurant and Bar. Open seven days a week, Katie's offers daily specials for lunch, dinner, and Sunday brunch. Serving New Orleans cuisine such as fried shrimp platters, grilled redfish, and a fully stocked bar. And don't forget about our expanded event seating and local entertainment. Featured on the best of food networks, diners, drive-ins, and dives, Katie's Restaurant and Bar. Welcome back to Inside New Orleans Sports. I'm your host, Eric Asher. Tonight, Gus Catgill of ESPN 100.3 is our guest. Gus, let's talk a bit about Michael Thomas's contract. Five years, $100 million, $62 million uh, uh, guaranteed, $20 million signing bonus. Now, Pro Football Talk had it as $19.25 million average per year. He's got to reach some incentives in the last two years of that deal to make it an average of about $20 million per year. Uh, obviously, the highest paid um, player in the, in, uh, at, the, at the wide receiver position in the league and now in NFL history. The question is not whether Michael Thomas deserves it. He deserves every nickel of it. The mm -hmm. question is, how's the contract structured, and how are you going to take care of the 17 core players yeah. that are coming up within the next two to three years? Yeah, that's the key. At some right. point in time, you're going to have to remember that not every single Saints player is going to have top no money. And it's you'll start seeing that this year. Yeah, it's unfortunate. You're going to have to make decisions. That's mm -hmm. right, on the offensive line, mm -hmm. defensive line, uh, and some players as well. I think it'll be interesting because it kind of forgotten Sheldon Rankins, right? Yeah. When he comes back, you have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. um, so we've seen, I, I, got, I'll go with, I'll go to history. Mickey Loomis has shown, and the Saints front office has shown with history, they've been able to either get into salary cap heck and operate mm -hmm. and still put on some teams. Um, you, you have to imagine not just our talk shows, are places that we come up with, and I remember doing this in February. If I'm Michael Thomas, I don't know how long Drew Brees is going to be. I, I might call the Saints. I might want to get a guaranteed. I don't care. Give me some guaranteed money because mm -hmm. I don't know who my quarterback's going to be in the near future. Right. Do my numbers go down next year? I just, I, I would call, you know. And then you saw free agency hit and all those DNs go, and I'm like, I'm Cam Jordan. I'm like, yo, and you saw him on Twitter. Sure. Kind of be like, I'd always want to be here. So they took care of him. Right. As my, they had to. My point is, we hear Sean Payton during practice always mention the famous whiteboard. Mm -hmm. There's a whiteboard upstairs in which he has players, positions, and names in case of injury at the ready. Constantly every week, they bring in players, mm -hmm. they work them out, they update their grade, they're ready to go. If they're that, you know, peculiar or particular about that aspect yeah. of it, there's no you're, way that all of a sudden they're just sitting there the going, all right, Michael Thomas <laughs> wants what? And, and they're surprised. Right. That's, not, that's not nearly the case. Right. I, I'm sure there's probably a board in Mickey's room, mm -hmm. you know, that has skull and crossbones right. and, or something, and it's oh, oh and it's the number of skull and crossbones yes. as to what contracts are going to be. They know what Lattimore will be mm -hmm. seeking. They know, they're, they're keeping an eye on this Ezekiel Elliott Gordon situation right. for Alvin Kamara because right. I could argue he might be the most important player in offense coming up. Um, they stay healthy. They look at Ramchek. I mean, what are we doing with Tehran here in a little right. bit? Uh, it, you got the safeties to pay right. here with Bell. So sure. all of that's laid out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I guarantee you there, there's that. So there's going to have to be tough conversations like Von Bell. You want to stay here? That's great. You're not getting top. Safety money, right? I don't think you know. You no, know. I mean it's just what it is, right? I mean Marcus Williams, you got to earn it. I mean Lattimore, it's pretty darn good. He's had a mm -hmm. great camp already. Right. 
okay, that might be top five money. Sure. So we could do this over some, some, some wings and beers. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we can start looking at it and we're not the professionals. Right. So I hear you. There's going to be some tough decisions. You can't sign everybody where they go in this window, how many titles, if they can get more than one, do they not get none? I think all of those are stressors that put parameters on it, right? Mm -hmm. If they haven't won in the next three, four years, you may have to make those moves to stay in contention. Mm -hmm. If you win this year, 10 next year, well, you know, it's kind of the end of a cycle. Well, We've gotten right. some Lombardis. Maybe you go back to, look, I'm planning for the future. You know what I'm but getting uh, at? I was going to mention that. To, to me, the key to keep it going is what the Patriots have been able to do and the good franchises do. And the fact that Jeff Ireland is here and has turned around that right. scouting department, you have to continue to draft well. You, and you're going to have to let go of players. Right. You know, you're going to have to say. Right. Because veterans at that some. point will be too expensive. Yeah. And you've got to have guys that are coming up in the program yeah. that are ready to step in immediately and to say, okay, I've sat behind this guy for a year or two. Yeah. I know the uh, system. I was a special teams guy. Played a little bit uh, you know, in, in terms of offense or defense. Now I'm ready to take that next step. I'm ready to be, be again, part of the core. To your point, I've made the case on our show that's real interesting to me. That, would you agree? Mm -hmm. This is a deep Saints team. Oh, yes. Probably the deepest in terms of too deep at a lot of positions to where you feel comfortable mm -hmm. with the guy backing up. No doubt. No offense to Will Clapp and no. Cameron Thomas stuff, but no. having Nick Easton, Cameron Thomas, right. and now Will Clapp maybe with the exception coming in later. Of, maybe with the exception of the tackle position. Right. Okay, right now. Right. They're still searching for Agreed. that third running back. Right. Okay, and, and then... Um, but how much is that carry going to no, be? No, it doesn't, but, right. but when you, if you don't want a big load on Kamara, right. okay, then you, you got need Murray. to have another running back. Dwayne Washington's looking right. to your point. These right. are guys undrafted sure, late right. but doing well because right. the point I'm bringing up is this they're deep mm -hmm. I can make a case that if Alizé Mack can come back healthy with his hammy right that again I don't know if that's official or not but he was grabbing at it when yes, he went down in practice sure. um you might have all five draft picks make the team I think it's like, a really good legitimately change. right oh, yeah. McCoy's gonna start at center no doubt you got to get Chauncey Gardner Johnson in somehow some way right Sean Payton this week spoke right. about Saquon Hampton who had an interception right. Sunday in practice at Yulman. Alizé Mack, it, it's him or, or Arnold, mm -hmm. I think, probably for that third tight end. Right. Hill is, Hill is going to be here. Sure. And there's Cook. But Alizé Mack could be your, right. your, your future there. And Kay Nellis is a special teams guy that plays everything and everywhere. Right. And Sean Payton went out and changed his entire special team staff this year because he wants to make it better. Yet we have a team that I've been telling everybody, it's a Super Bowl contending team. Mm -hmm. So that's some spots that are going to be cut. Right. But that's my point, because I, I'm not just saying I think they can make the roster because they're draft picks. I think they're additions. I think they're upgrades. Right. I think they're good. And, and they're, so, they're players that you can build on for the future. Right. So it's to your point, you're seeing it right now. Right. You have to draft well and not just draft guys, because I think the last two years, because of some of the success, mm -hmm. they reached. They, these are projects. Like mm -hmm. last year's draft, man. I mean, you know, they mm -hmm. were like, hey, let's see if these guys can develop. This year... Four or five likely make it. One goes practice squad. Yeah, I, I would. It, and again, you hope that the one of the practice squad could make it because right. one of the problems last and year. And keep is, in mind, when I say make it, you're, you're looking at 46. Right. You're looking at the guys you can dress mm -hmm. on Sunday. Yes, because again, last year, guys you were trying to sneak that practice squad, they ended up on active rosters. Mm -hmm. That's how deep that team was last right. year. And to your point, they I agree. Again this today. team looks like like just as deep. Uh, does it look like Peyton is satisfied? We touched on it a bit. With the third running back right now, he's bringing in guys. Uh, Twiz Rogers was just brought in. Rob Kelly was brought in and cut. Uh, they thought they had Theo Reddick. He signs with Denver. Uh, and also that tackle guard swing man. Uh, again, that may be a situation where we hear Peyton talking about the right 53 all the time. That you know, when, when the final cut comes down or before that final cut, he's going out and he's making a deal or he's plucking somebody off a roster okay, to be able to play that tackle position unless somebody really emerges in these preseason games because he's still tinkering there. Yeah. I mean, he talked about it this week about Cameron Tom <coughs> getting a look see over at mm -hmm. guard and stuff. Like we said, Nick Easton's a guard mm -hmm. center combo. And look at Will Clapp. Look, he can play in this league, yeah. and, and you, you, will, you don't want to give away good football players. I, I'm with you. You know, I had the old, give me the old bubble wrap team mm -hmm. for preseason, and I was surprised by the amount of people on social media, people that call the show, that put Daron Armstead, Ryan Ramchek, mm -hmm. I saw an Andres Pete in there. They realize the importance to what you said earlier in the show about the offensive line. Right. But I love Armstead. And again, it's dumb luck, stupid luck, whatever you want to call it. The guy got hurt last year. Let him go year. see Aaron Nelson. Body slamming. <laughs> yeah, walk yeah. across the parking lot. Yeah. Because he hurt somebody. Right. 
body slamming them. Mm -hmm. But he missed a bunch of games because. But of it's, it. it's the problem is it's been an epidemic with him. Yeah, he's and, great. And, and at some point, again, when healthy, he's one of the best tackles in football. But the problem is he's not healthy enough. I almost. And it's, it, it's fine when you have a young yeah. player that you can come in and you can feel comfortable with, or even a veteran guy. You know, you can plug and play. Yeah. Okay. No big deal. You know, give me five games with that guy, and I know that he can come in and and he's gonna. There's not gonna be that drop off. But I worry about this year. Kicking Pete outside if you have to, bringing in Cameron Tom or Nick That Easton, might be what they do. Okay, yeah. and, and doing that. And then you have a rookie center. You know, you want to be able to have some stability on the inside interior of that offensive line with, with, with um, uh, Wolford and, and, and McCoy and also Pete. You start kicking guys out, all of a sudden, you know, it's a little bit, uh, it's not that continuity. And I think continuity goes a long way, especially when you're having a, a, a guy that's never played in the NFL before that's at the most – Critical position yeah. for this offense, the center, when, when you talk about the offensive line. It's the beauty of having Drew Brees, though. True. So we had Robert Meachin on most of the fall last year. Does a great job. I loved way. hearing the stories mm -hmm. of what Drew does Monday through Friday. Where you just grab him, and he's like, by the way, the DB that's going to be defending you, he does this. So he knows everything on the mm -hmm. field. He's looking on the field while he's looking at film at other guys. You've already heard McCoy say this offseason, OTA mini camp and training camp, that he and Drew talk all the time. I have to imagine Drew Brees has made it a point mm -hmm. to talk to him about what he sees, why he sees, how he looks at film, what does he need, how can he help him right. to make him couple. Because when you hear McCoy talk, that's basically the principle. He's like, I just get that relationship going. Sure. So if Drew's that meticulous about everybody else on the field, he goes and talks to defensive backs. There is no doubt in my mind that he is spending some of those nights mm -hmm. here while they're all together in a team hotel. Right. Really easy. Walk down the hallway. All right, my man, this is where I need you to block this. When I call an audible, I'm doing this because of this. So it'll be interesting to see the growth of that right. because I'm with you. It is incredible. And he was spoiled. He had a very oh, good one in Max Unger. And he's had some good ones here. Yes. When, when they make runs and they won that Super Bowl, mm -hmm. they've had one of the best centers in the league. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And, of course, Unger was a guy that made all the calls. Yeah. That took a lot off Breeze's plate. He'll make the calls this year. But, again, uh, to your point, that's one of the reasons why you don't push the Hall of Famer out the door, right? Yeah. Okay? Just the little things that, that <laughs> right. okay, more than what you see on the field, getting his, his whole team ready for, for the, for the uh, season and ready for the game. All right, talk to me about the wide receiver position. You know, again, I, I don't want to see Ted Ginn. I don't want to see Michael Thomas mm -hmm. through the entire preseason. Uh, Kirkwood, Smith, Butler, Cobbs, Grayson, Matthews. Talk to me about it. Yeah, I, I was saying during the offseason when a lot of the folks were saying, hey, please go out and sign mm -hmm. players. And they all said, like, why have we forgotten about Traquan Smith? I don't know if, if I'm the only one. Right. Do you feel the drop at Dallas has lingered with him? Yeah. And what I mean by that is, like, right. fans, I think, think of that. Right. We're going to make the catch. I'm like, the only real well, game then, I well, can then think, you think of is, about Dan Arnold in the NFC Championship Well, game. I mean, my, that's what I'm right. getting at. It's like, you know, he was the guy that caught the record-breaking pass for right. Breeze and sure. Washington. He's got breakaway speed. Right. When we were here last year, he was the camp darling. When we were here last year, we were talking about he's the replacement for mm -hmm. Ted Ginn. Yes. And yet, all of a sudden, a year later, we've forgotten right. about him. So He had a rookie wall, plain and simple. Well, and again, it goes to the O-line, right. right? So when we talk to uh, 4K comes on the show all the time as a mm -hmm. quarterback, I'm like, look, if I can give you almost three seconds, you can find anybody. If I cut a second off of that, A, I, I, my, and, and what he was saying is the number of progressions that I can make mm -hmm. are going to be harder. So you have to get open initially and quickly. And rookie wall, understanding, having that, you know, telepathy right. that Thomas has with, with Drew, it, it takes time. Yes, you know, we almost forget that last year in that game because Ginn came back. But when Ginn missed games, Michael Thomas was the only receiver that has ever played with Drew ever in a game. So we had a brand new receiving core, essentially, Drew mm -hmm. had to kind of learn the ropes with. Right. So it was remarkable that it was setting the records they did it earlier in the season. You know what's interesting is we switched to the defensive side of the ball, linebacker and, and special teams hand-in-hand, hand, defensive back special teams hand-in-hand hand, with the change in the NFL rule mm -hmm. book. Uh, you've got um, uh, Cade Nellis, you've got uh, Robertson, who, again, who is the leader on, on, that, on that special teams at linebacker. Uh, was it Vince Beagle? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I had Sean Fasano on the show today saying that Beagle's getting some looks right now yeah. at defensive end, a pass rush defensive end. And they think that that might be something you can do. Um, you talk about the uh, situation at uh, defensive back where Shirelles is going to be your, your returner, Hardy, who's been one of your best special teams players, and Banjo. 
That's six players right there on the defensive side of the ball that you figure have got to be able to back up in some form or fashion that are going to be on the field for special teams. Yeah. Again, I, I don't know how he's going to cut a lot of right, these Right, that's, that's how hard it gets at that um, point. Because you're looking at corner, and, and look, I, I think maybe some fans have misread it to mm-hmm. the point. I was talking about it with Mike Triplett about mm-hmm. this this week, that Eli Apple – not getting his fifth year picked up. Right. Now, granted, it went from two to thirteen I mean, million. On, I mean, you can't pay him that, the, right? Especially but it doesn't mean the Saints are done with him. Oh no way! They, they get, look, he traded. He traded a draft mm-hmm. pick for him. Right. And look, he's had a really nice camp. Mm-hmm. He really, honestly, has. He was the guy that tipped the ball on Sunday mm-hmm. that led to the Mario Davis interception. Mm-hmm. He's had a nice camp. And, but to your point, you know, if, if you can have him and Lattimore there, Chauncey Gardner Johnson, how does it fit in on yes. there? Patrick Robinson, is he the nickel? Right. P.J. Williams, that's, PJ a, that, Williams. That, that, that's a battle there. Yeah, I mean, like, it's it, there's a lot of depth there. But to your point, when you start looking at the roster and where you're going to be, again, Sean Payton completely brought in a new special teams crew. Mm-hmm. He's making an emphasis. And I think it's because it's simple to look at it, right? There's a lot of good teams in the NFC. There's probably four or five teams he thinks are in that mm-hmm. area. One or two that look, those are the ones that are match up against us mm-hmm. player for player. Where is the difference in the game? Special teams. Right. If I can get better field position, mm-hmm. if I can get, you know, turn, turn the position over, if I can score off of it, if I can make a big play off of it. I mean, the Saints last year, I mean, they've won games because of special no teams. Doubt. So they had multiple coaches. There's been an emphasis within the last four years on special teams. Mm-hmm. We've seen it. Players like Banjo and Hardy, who were brought on the roster simply to be special teams players. That's why I listed those six players. Those six players, maybe Caden Ellis is the guy that's maybe the, you know, the outside looking in here. It might be five, but, I mean, again, Ellis has excelled on special teams. But th- that's been the emphasis here. The only thing they haven't been able to do is return yeah. punts and kicks. Yeah. Now, kicks are tougher now because of the rule changes, but they have a guy that can flip the field for you in punt return because – you don't want to expose Kamara to that unless no, you have to yeah. pull a Reggie Bush out of your ass. As far as I'm concerned, the days of Kamara and Ginn returning have got to stop. Right. I mean, now, again, we're, you know, Saints are down some. You mm-hmm. need a big play, throw in 41. Right. Sure. I mean, you saw that a couple of years ago in mm-hmm. Tampa, right? He mm-hmm. returned to kick. Right. So, I, I'm okay with that. But, no, I, look, and those three guys you mentioned, um, they were not on the roster last year. You know, and Cheryl's mm-hmm. and Grayson that we've seen uh, get, get the kicks back there. So, yeah, uh, it's going to be an interesting battle there. Let's talk a little bit about the, the line now because mm-hmm. the line was the strength of the, of the defense last year. It's one of the reasons why the second and third levels look so well. They look so good because of how well they played on defense, defensive line. Uh, talk to me, again, you're looking at Davenport, Edwards, Horton, Hendrickson, and, mm-hmm. of course, Vince Beagle on, on the outside now rushing the passer. Uh, out of those guys, who makes this team? Oof. Uh, it'll be interesting. Don't forget Malcolm Brown in the middle there. I know right. we're looking well, in the middle. Tackle, right, that's yeah. the outside because – I, I think he, that addition has been tremendous. They, they needed him. Yeah. Once he, Rankins went down, they needed yeah. to get a guy like that. Still and imagine up. when Rankins comes back and you have Malcolm Brown there with you're, an Anya you're, so you're solidifying that right. middle for right. sure. Which is one of the reasons why they did so well last year. You know, I don't know why Trey Hendrickson hasn't been suited uh, up. I, I, I like the nasty spiel. He always, I don't know if it's that he doesn't get along in the mm-hmm. locker room. And I have no reason to believe. Right. I just, I don't sure. know. I'm trying to think of what the issue well, is. Well, they went out and got Edwards who can swing it inside. They went right. out and got Horton for but, a reason because they didn't feel comfortable with Hendrickson at this point. Hopefully, again, he takes the next step. As a third-round pick, and you think he's got to take look, the next step. And again, I don't see the film. I don't right. know that what they see is a mm-hmm. little different. But what I see is when I go to practice or I see training camps, He's making plays. And when I see him in preseason games like last year, he's getting multiple sacks in the games. So I, now, again, you can sit there and say, well, it's a third string, it's a second. I, and well, he can only play when you're giving him. I, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in this boat too, right, because they're trying him on that right end because mm-hmm. he was behind Cam Jordan. Yes. So I get that. He never comes off the field. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of hard to do that. Um, to me, I, I'd like to almost use the, a breeze-like approach, right, on, on one of those DNs. I don't, I do I need to see Cam mm-hmm. Jordan, really? Put him out there. Right. You know, and I know well, it's the opposite end. I'm going to tell you right you now. Know, is it Davenport? Right. Play him five snaps. Get him out there. Get right. Hendrickson in there right. as much as I can. You see, I take a different tack. I think that Davenport needs some work in the preseason. I'm with you. That's why I said it's, okay. pre- it's hard because they're yeah. putting him on the right, right. side. You know, they, they, he needs so some work. So it's one or the other. 
Uh, I, I need to see Davenport, Edwards, Horton, and Hen Hendrickson, and Beagle yeah. uh, in the preseason. You know, just like, again, Anyamata, Ziggy Hood, and, and Sly Williams, I need to see them on the inside. I know what Brown's going to do. Mm -hmm. I got a feeling what Anyamata's going to do in taking the next step, even with a one-game suspension. Right. But you need some guys that can rotate down there because, look, I don't know. If Rankins comes back in October, November, when will he be Rankins? You have to approach it as Rankins is not playing for you. This right, year. this year. I mean, I mean you just if, have to, if he comes back. If you back can get him great, back for December and a playoff run, fantastic. Land yet. Right, but I have to plan like you're not. Right. So it's a good point because you have to make your roster decisions like those are your starters at D tackle. Right. No, you got to believe that. You got to believe that. And, and that's why I want to see some of these veteran guys and see what they do in the upcoming preseason. Uh, and, and to me, I'm like you, bubble wrap the starters. Yeah. There's no, we know what the starters can do. There's no reason to put them out there if you're worried about continuity. You know, continuity is, the way the NFL is now, continuity is the first four weeks of the season. Uh, and again, you look at the first four games this year, you know, Texans are not an easy task mm -hmm. here. I right. mean, look, Bill O'Brien's under pressure over there, right, for them to take that next step. Everyone's picking the Colts. Mm -hmm. They're the darling. Sean Watson's no slouch. Bernard Hopkins is one of the top receivers in the league that's coming as well. J.J. Watt, mm -hmm. that defense, that's not going to be an easy Monday no, night absolutely game. absolutely not. Then you're on the road, Rams, Seattle. Mm -hmm. I don't need to mention why those games are big. Yes. And you've got everybody's darling for some reason this offseason with Dallas mm -hmm. coming in. So that it's, it's about health. I'm with you. Minimal amount of action for them because you have to because of roster right. and depth. I right. understand that. But – you got to find who these guys are going to be that you're going to make the tough cuts because it's going to be tough. No doubt. Switch to LSU. Um, first of all, uh, Chasson and, uh, and Cushenberry uh, have the number 18 jersey. They get that, that honor. Cushenberry will not be able to wear the 18 jersey during, this, during the uh, game because he's an offensive lineman, and that is not allowed in college football. But everything that I've heard from the people I've interviewed uh, that have a chance to be able to see the first 20 minutes of practice right. and those that have a chance to be on the inside and 20 see minutes, what's baby. going on. You know, again, yeah, they're getting, you know, the boosters can see it, so they'll have to tell the, the reporters, they say, up-tempo. Yeah. The one thing Joe Brady has brought from the Saints, you won't see maybe the, you know, the, the passing game, but you'll see the up-tempo, which, which I believe, and I said this today, with a year in the weight room, with the experience the offensive line got last year, going up tempo where you're getting rid of the ball quickly, mm -hmm. that offensive line should be able to adjust and be much better than they were last year. I, I think sort of like, and we'll get to Uptown New Orleans here in a minute, but I, I think the addition of a coach like a Brady is going to help j just to bring mm -hmm. a fresh approach, just to bring a different outlook mm -hmm. to it. But I also think it's important to keep Ensminger in that Brady knows him and he knows Brady. So he knows what he can do well, he knows what he doesn't, he's understanding of that. I think what's going to be interesting to me, you talk about expectation levels, no. right? Um, LSU's got them. And I think they're comfortable in that. And I think it starts with Joe Burrow. Mm -hmm. I mean, I honestly believe that because I'm with you. We've said this for years on your show, talk mm -hmm. radio, yeah. hanging out. Why does LSU need a dual threat? Get the ball to NFL receivers right. and running backs and tight end. Isn't it amazing yeah, it's that they've had uh, just a, a litany of NFL receivers with the horrible quarterback and they've had? They can't get first downs. They can't throw the football. It's just ridiculous. Last year, though, you finally had a guy that could make plays on mm -hmm. third down, can read defenses. We saw it in game one, made the first check yep. of an audible for a run. Right. And when you're talking about tempo, I, I – we're not talking Oregon Duck football no, here. No, no, no. Or Auburn that tries gimmicking to try to get, mm -mm. The, you know, get the ball snapped. And we're talking about in and out of the huddle quickly. Right. Making the case and having those plays coming in quickly, having the rotations, the packages, all those different things where the defense doesn't know what's going well, on. Short passing game. Exactly right. Look, right. Th that's what makes the Saints so difficult to defend. And I'm, I'm interested to see if we see that with LSU. Mm -hmm. You don't have to get out there. You know, get lined up to, to, to snap the ball, look to the side, and see the cards with the no. pictures of a duck and the Chick-fil-A right. or whatever. You can do tempo by getting in out of the huddle and just having the next play ready to go. Mm -hmm. Here comes the next set of packages, new receivers, new running backs, but you're ready to snap mm -hmm. it out of the huddle, and the defense is still trying to figure out where to go. No doubt. Uh, offensively, it'll be interesting to see, again, how, how that offense rolls. Uh, I have faith in Burrow. From, again, I think he's a cerebral quarterback, and he's got, he's got what it takes to be able to get that done. Uh, what's going to happen with the running back position? That's yeah. a deep position there. You know, when you talk about Clyde Edwards Hilaire, he's expected to take um, the ability to flourish in this offense. But man, I'm telling you right now, um, uh, Davis Price and John Emery, yeah. I would not fall asleep on those two young players. As, as far as I'm concerned, I'm great. No offense to Clyde right. Edwards Hilaire. Right. Exactly. But 
if those two freshmen can come in and give you anything, because again, any of those backs that you had last year, were they NFL backs? No, they weren't. I mean, they're not. No. So you have had the, the luck of having NFL backs right there. If those guys can give you anything, that should be fun. And look, you've only got them three years. Yeah. I mean, really. I mean, if, you're, if, you're, if they are NFL caliber backs, the most you can hope for is three yeah. years. So get them on the field. Georgia won an Emory. I mean, those are, those are highly coveted right. athletes back there. Like right. I said, Joe Burrow's just got to read the defense, get the ball to the right player. To your point about the wide receiver position, boy, they've had some great wide receivers at LSU. This might be the deepest, most skilled bunch they've had in a long, long time. Yeah. Again, you have to give a defense a reason to believe, though, mm-hmm. that you have weapons. That you can throw the ball. Okay? Because of Drew Brees, defense is starting to go, wait, they got Cook, mm-hmm. they got Kamara, you got Thomas, you got some guy named Butler now all of a sudden standing. What are they doing over there? It's like, it, it drives you fits. Until Burrow and that offense can prove that – we will spread the ball around the field, that we can make the plays, that you have to decide that run or pass mm-hmm. out of this formation. No one's going to buy it. So I think those first few games are important. I think the opener is important to maybe drop a handful of TDs to kind of mm-hmm. show what you can. But to me, is Austin. It's a top 10 matchup. They'll be number 10. Yep. You know, they're, they're not playing anybody. It's highly ranked. I don't think LSU will move up either mm-hmm. in that first week. So you're, po- you're looking at a 6-10 matchup. Right. And if you can drop some points on that, because look, that might be a score fest, mm-hmm. right? I mean, Herman in that offense well, in it, Texas. It could like, be. It could be. But I think the strength of the LSU team is the defensive side of the I ball. I agree. You well, know, I think all it's three a good levels. Test. It's a good test. You know, all three levels are strong with, again, competent backups there, mm-hmm. young players that are uh, – I think they will, they will go as far – I would say this boy as, as far as the offensive line takes them. But that defense, if it is as good as advertised, they will be tough to score on. Yeah. Like I said, I, I'm, I'm excited about it just because I do think right. they're that big. And I'm nuts. I, I, I understand that there's no reason for me to believe maybe it's, it's Ray Hope. I don't think Bama goes undefeated this right. year. I really honestly don't. And it has nothing to do with their talent. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with Tua coming back and trying mm-hmm. to prove anything. It has everything to do with Nick Saban's comment at SEC Media Days in which unsolicited he threw his coaches under, under the bus. Yes. And he has, what, five or six new assistants? Mm-hmm. We saw here the New Orleans Saints have a brain drain. Mm-hmm. And they went 7-9. Oh, no. and nine. Whether it was Curtis, uh, whether it was Dennis Allen. Right. You had, you know, uh, Lombardi right. leave for I'll take it to the next level. The guys in the front office yes. that were doing the drafting and the scouting. Yeah. Yeah. The brain drain there as well, yeah. which also led to, again, lack of restocking this roster. So when you already are coming out in media days, warning your new assistants... Mm-hmm. You better remember where your focus is. Right. I, I just, I, and then remember the draft, the week before the draft, you had a player that was going to go in the mm-hmm. fourth round and he was kind of criticizing he should stay and be a first and second rounder. Right. That guy came out and told Nick Saban, keep, your, keep my name out of your mouth. I mean, I just, I don't know if you're starting to see the cracks here and there. Well, and again, he, maybe it's a reason but he's for always to look for look, home. You, the reputation going back to Michigan State. Tough to State, work with. I get LSU, yep. tough to work with. Yep. Could never keep an assistant long term. I, I have met trainers there and that have worked for other places. He will walk past you and not say hello. Right. And you work there. So. Let me, I want to finish with, with LSU because I want to go on the two lane for the last uh, five minutes of, of the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only real question mark on this team, place kicker. I mean, yeah. Cade York, kind of. Are you surprised Cole Tracy's not with anybody? No, me too. I mean, I, I'm shocked. I, I can't believe it. Because the guy showed a First clutch. Of all, he's clutch, right? right? He's clutch. <laughs> I mean, what's the biggest right. problem with NFL kicker? I'm kick shocked. Her? Between I the years. Yeah. No, I'm I, surprised. I'm as surprised. Well. Somebody will hook up with someone. Somebody. I, can, right. I cannot believe right. that. I just I'm dumb. But then again, no one knew where Will Lutz came from. No, no, they didn't. No, it's true. I, I, Seriously, it is. But but again. Um, the fact that he's been in camps yeah. and has not been signed. So that, to me, is the big question mark about this team. Can K. York come in and pick up where, 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 where Tracy left off? It, it's as key as key can be to know right. that you can cross a certain part of the field and know you have three in the bag. Right. What you thought about the practice facility? I mean, I, I'd love to take a nap in those pods <laughs> and all that. But, you know, and look, there, it got so much positive and then so much negative publicity and feedback on it. Um, it, it's it's what it is in mm-hmm. college football today, right? Ohio State, race. a week later, right. shows, hey, we got a basketball court mm-hmm. for the football team right. to go there in a barber shop and First a video all, game. I don't want my football team playing basketball. I, I'm just saying. <laughs> so, look, it's it, that's what it is. Clemson did it. I saw the right. piece earlier this week on Sports right. Center. They're visiting all these campuses. And 
I mean, Dabo, Sweeney's office, and, and they have like motion capture thing for the mm -hmm. kids to go play so they can make their own right. games. It's incredible. You've seen this Tulane team grow under yeah. Willie Fritz. You've been on the sideline closer than anybody. Everybody thinks they're poised to take the next step. What do you think? Oh, well, it's simple. I asked Willie Fritz in media day on my show, flat out. I'm like, what's the next step? I asked him that. He says conference championship. Didn't hide from it. That's huge. That's a, lot. That's a big leap from well, six wins and go bowling. Right. So when you hear that, and it's not just him. Justin McMillan stopped by. He's mm -hmm. like, it's conference championship. Uh, you talk to Patrick Johnson, who I think is going to be an NFL defensive yes, player. I agree with okay? you. Uh, on the D-line, who had 10 and a half sacks. Willie Fritz says he should have had 16. Um, he's like, it's conference. So what's being talked about, look, I've been in that locker room and doing it. They just wanted six. They, they didn't care what bowl it was. Right. The Eric Asher, you know, barbecue wing bowl. Right. It didn't matter. They just wanted six wins to go bowling. To a lot of schools and a lot of fan base, that's like, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. and they understand that. But, they, but, but it, it was the They the now them. feel that. Right. Look, I think beating Memphis last year was big for them. Mm -hmm. I think the Thursday night game, game four, Yeoman Stadium, conference opener, Houston. Right. Because a lot of people were chirping. Yes. Leading to that Thursday night mm -hmm. game at Houston last yeah. year, and they got waxed. Yep. Speaking to them on camera, or on mic, off mic, they remember that. Now, you got some tough ones. You got mm -hmm. at Auburn week two. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. You got two other games. FIU is not easy to right. open. But if you can be two and one going in that and you get that win, you can start talking to me about maybe, look, at Memphis, that team's never played well at Memphis. Mm -hmm. You got to be at Memphis later in the year. It's Houston and Memphis that are picked above you in that conference on that division. And it's still Houston and Memphis until you can mm -hmm. prove that you can beat You're them. You're right. So – but I think the next step for me, I understand what the team and the coaches are saying. Realistically to me, can you be this? Can you be the team when you're expected to win, win? Right. Can you be the team that can handle expectations? With only a couple minutes left, I will say this. What you like are two aspects of this, of this team. The quarterback mm -hmm. has, has now has some experience, yeah. even though it's a new system. But the defense could be one of the best in the country. It Definitely could. one of the best in the conference. But I, I, you know what's crazy? I think the offense might be the reason this team wins this year. And I know what I'm saying right. because I've watched and heard mm -hmm. Todd go bananas that Tulane couldn't get a first right. down. Um, the relationship, and we can explore this later on as the season gets closer, the relationship between Justin McMillan and Will Hall, right. they're BFFs. They love, love, love one another talking. To, to see a kid like Justin McMillan sit in front of me, and say he respects him as a coach, respects him as a man, knows what he wants offensively, said that a very heavy running back room, no running backs come with frowns or upset right. away from practice. He's letting you in that sometimes players get frustrated. Their numbers aren't called. And he says everyone's happy. He said they're using the tight ends. McCleskey's addition at receiver. McMillan just has to make the right read. Right, right. So, and the offensive line has to protect him. That's what's Which good. is the biggest key for this team, I it, think. Yeah, last year he had no time. Right, and that's the biggest key, no doubt about but it. But they went bowling with no yep, time. No doubt. Gus, thanks for being with us as always. Uh, certainly appreciate it. One more time. Tell the folks how they catch you on the radio. Yeah, 12 to 3 each and every day, ESPN New Orleans. You can also check us out uh, on the TuneIn Radio app. It's absolutely free. And at ESPN Radio, no on Twitter. And, of course, uh, coming soon, the New Orleans Pelicans. Yes, can't wait. There you go. Uh, it's Gus Cattengill. Appreciate his time tonight. Thanks so much for tuning in. Remember, there's a rebroadcast of this program each and every Friday night right here on WLE TV at 10 p.m. Also on Pelican Sports Television every Friday night. That's 9 o'clock. You can catch me on the radio, Sports 1280, 101.1 FM HD 2 in the iHeartRadio app. You can listen live, download the podcast at ericasher.com. All the previous episodes of this program is at ericasher.com and also on our YouTube channel, so check that out as well. Also, again, want to thank our friends here at WLE TV, uh, the production staff here, Ron Yeager, Jim Dotson, Naila Jones, also William Hill, and uh, also Tommy coming in today helping out as well. We appreciate his help. Uh, for Gus Cattengill, I'm Eric Asher. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, certainly appreciate it. We'll check you out for next week for another edition of Inside New Orleans Sports. Mm -hmm.